Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to fix your Maytag Bravos XL washer. Uh, just a few years old, but these end up having a very common issue where they just don't turn on, they fail to communicate, they won't start, you go to push the start button, nothing happens, or you get a specific error code. There's two that can pop up, an F6E2 or an F6E3 with both of those essentially mean the same thing. There's a communication error from your board to the washer. And so uh, these tools here laid out are pretty much what you're gonna need to get fixed up. Uh, this right here to take the back panel off. I'm gonna use my drill, it's a little faster, but uh, essentially I've got a one fourth bit in there. It's the same thing as just not having a bit in there. So if you have a drill with one of these, but you don't have the bit, you can just use the empty socket there same thing on my little stubby guy here you can buy these for just a few bucks at the hardware store uh, scraper i'll show you we're going to use that to get the console off and then this is actually going to be what's going to fix your problem a little cleaning is all we're going to need to do and then i'll show you a pro tip at the end to make sure you don't have this issue in the future but let's go over a few things and get started the model number for this particular machine, the MVWB835DW1, uh, those model numbers are going to vary a little bit depending on washer size, year and date it was manufactured, all that. Uh, but essentially, this style here. There's also some Whirlpool Cabrios that are very similar, uh, a little different, but um, I've tried this doing this method on some of those and it's kind of hit and miss with the Whirlpool Cabrio but uh, several of these I've been able to fix and so just to explain it real quick essentially what happens is the hot steam from the tub rises and there's a few holes you'll see under here that steam comes up and kind of hits the underside of this board over on this side there's a couple areas that are exposed I'm going to show you that here in just a sec I'll show you how to get the console off. But that's kind of a breakdown of what this error code means. It means, um, like I said, uh, loss of communication, which is caused by corrosion. Where does the corrosion come from? It comes from the washer itself. The hot steam coming off uh, hits those contacts and corrodes it out. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, first things first, obviously you want to make sure it's unplugged. Now, I've already done this repair on this machine. I'm going to show you the steps to do it. Uh, so essentially, unplugged, turn your water off, pull this out if you can. Essentially, we want to get to the back here. And now you're going to see, let me bring this camera in here. You're going to see the screws we need to take off are here, right there. So I'm going to take a second. It goes a lot faster if you have a drill. like that you don't have to take this one off this just kind of lifts out pulls up and you can set this stuff aside okay. now we're done with the back side this around might be easier to move the camera but that's okay all right now this is where we are going to take our flat scraper tool and pull this up a little bit here right on the side here you're going to pull forward and push back give you a little wiggle room there just be real careful if you can maybe even find one that's a little thinner if you had like a butter knife that would work too but you're gonna slip it down in here without scratching up this stainless steel plating here kind of wiggle it under there and it helps if you can kind of push back on it, get it in there. It's not the easiest design, but once you got it in there, it goes back quite a little ways here. There, I'm on the clip, and now you can just kind of push it, and this side pops up like that. And now that side's free. Same thing on the other side. Hardest part of this whole thing is probably getting this off of here without tearing it up, chewing it up. And that stuck down here, working the wig in. There we go. And 
Now, this, you kind of pull forward on it, it's going to flip around like that. Let me set it up just like that. Now I'm going to take this off so I can show you exactly what we're working with here. So, like I said, the steam kind of comes up. You have several holes here that the steam will rise up through. Now, the only part of this board that's exposed is right here. And so when I first took this off, these two gold contacts, let me try it from the other side, maybe get a better view. These two gold contacts now on the right-hand side, four in the middle, and then that silver contact there, and those two down there. Basically, it was all corroded, and it was had something like a green, white, milky-looking substance all over it. And so, and there's one more right tucked back in there on the left. Essentially, all of those contacts there had corrosion on it. Uh, took the Q-tip, put some rubbing alcohol on it, just scrubbed it as good as I could to make those nice and shiny. Kind of went all around and got down in here best I could. Rubbing alcohol, obviously, is uh, going to evaporate, and it's a cleaner, so it's not going to hurt your board here and essentially just scrubbed and cleaned all that as good as I possibly could and then popped this back together turned it on and it started working perfectly now the code is gonna stay until you clear it and I'll show you how to do that here in just a sec okay next step here pro tip is this just going to happen again? The more you do laundry, you clean it, put it back together, start doing your laundry again. All that steam and heat rises up. Yes, it's going to keep happening over and over and over again. So pro tip on how to keep this from happening in the future. This guy right here, you can go on Amazon. It comes with this little brush, which is kind of nice. 12 bucks is all this is. Uh, and what this is, this is essentially a clear coat that we're going to put over that those pieces on the board to protect it. Uh, a water barrier if you will so that this doesn't happen again it's 12 bucks on Amazon at least the time of filming this video so if you get away with a $12 repair all said and done that's pretty good considering that's about a $300 board there if uh, you called a repairman and you explained the issue and told them what code you're getting they'd say oh you need a whole new board so they'd want to charge you you know 80 bucks to just to walk through the door more if they have to travel and then they're going to charge you for labor for an hour to put this in, which, you know, could be another 80 bucks. And then the board itself, three, 300 bucks, maybe 250 on Amazon. They're going to probably charge you three, 400 bucks for. So is it worth it to spend 12 bucks and not have to do this again? I don't know. You know, maybe, uh, maybe once a year you pop this open and clean it. <laughs> if it were me, I just paid 12 bucks. Obviously I did. Uh, and coat it and then uh, not have to deal with it anymore. So um, a lot of boards nowadays are actually already have this stuff on it. They put it all in place where they'll coat the boards and plug them in and be good to go. Samsung does that a lot with their boards. Uh, so we're going to do that real quick. And that's just a matter of dipping this in here and brushing it over everything. I'm not going to sh show that per se. Uh, kind of hard to get that camera angle, but really, I mean, you're just going to paint the pieces there. Uh, so that's your pro tip. You can look that up. There's a silicone version that I actually like a little bit better, but it was sold out. So my next bottle, I just got this stuff here. So, all right, putting it back together. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Make sure that these little metal springs here are in place. Sometimes when you're pulling them out, they will pop out on you and be stuck down here, like right here. So just make sure that they're in place like they're supposed to be. The short side's on the back, the long side's towards the front. Make sure nothing came loose here. I gave that about 20 minutes to set up and dry. So here, snaps right back into place. And then we're going to put the back back on. Okay, and that just slides back on there.
was missing one. There it is. Now we're all back together. And essentially, since I've already done this one, I already cleared the codes, I'm gonna show you how it works. Let me take this off of here. Sorry about my camera set up here. I'm not used to using two hands for everything. Um, so how this works, plug it in without turning anything on, wait about 30 seconds. Then you're going to press these three buttons here three times. So you're gonna one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. What'll happen is this will light up. You'll see 888, and then it'll show you that code, which is uh, F6E2, F6E3. It'll just flash. Now, if you push this button right here, the third one that you pressed one time, it cycles through the codes. So uh, F6E2, F6E2 keeps flashing. You push it, and it'll show you F6E3. If you push it again, it may be able to show you another code if you have some other issue. Um, but essentially, those are the two codes we're looking to clear if, if this was your particular issue. So what you do then is you hold this button five seconds. Hold it down five seconds and you'll hear a beep. This will clear out again. 888 will show and you're done. You push the power key, it'll shut off. And then once you press this, light back up, you're good to go. Sometimes I've seen where the codes clear themselves. If you happen to leave it unplugged for an extended period of time, plug it back in, I go to clear the codes and they're just not there anymore. Like it recognized that the issue's been fixed. But most of the time, I, I can't call it consistent because other times plug it in and the codes are still there and I go in and clear them out. So uh, one other pro tip, all those codes, how to get into that, it's all located in a service manual that is in your machine. So if you lift this up, right back in here, like if, if you can get your hand back in here, it's kind of hard to see, but you stick your hand back in here, there's a little paper or plastic kind of Ziploc bag. You can kind of use your fingers to get inside of it and pull the manual out. I'm not going to because I have several and I'm gonna leave that one. They're kind of, a, they're even more of a pain to put back in there. So for the next person that gets this washer, obviously I'm gonna leave it in there for them. But yeah, a lot of people don't know that that's tucked away inside of there. Uh, that's it guys. I hope this video saved you hundreds of dollars. I hope it worked for your particular issue. I'll try to add enough tags to make sure that uh, someone who has this particular machine is about to maybe throw it out or spend four or five hundred bucks getting it fixed can do these simple little tips and tricks. Get it up and running. Let's keep these things running. Let's keep them out of the landfills or scrap yards and let's keep it going. Thanks for watching my video. Y'all have a great day.